Hi, I'm Sarah Weber from the University of Melbourne. I'm presenting work conducted with my colleagues Ryan Kelly, Craig Wadley and Wally Smith. To understand how HCI has considered the possibilities of technology for engagement with nature, we conducted a scoping review of work in HCI over the past 25 years. There's been a long-standing interest in the role that technology has played in separating humanity from nature, and this has gained renewed and pressing importance in the era of ecological crisis. The recent expansion of digital technologies has been seen by many as continuing and exacerbating the disconnection from nature. But digital initiatives are also part of a counterflow of design which aims to reconnect modern societies with natural environments. There's now an expanding body of HCI research on this topic, encompassing a wide range of interventions motivated by human well-being, education, conservation and scientific research. To understand how HCI research has considered technology for nature engagement, we undertook a scoping review following an established methodology. We defined nature engagement to include sensing, capturing, learning about, analysing, shaping, utilising, protecting or nurturing nature. And we excluded publications which didn't address one of these forms of nature engagement, even if they dealt with the use of technology in the outdoors. Adopting these definitions, this review addresses the following research questions. What are the overarching theoretical perspectives on nature engagement that frame HCI research? And in what ways are digital technologies being deployed for nature engagement in HCI research? We started by searching the ACM Digital Library, identified relevant citing and cited articles, and examined outputs of relevant workshops. We reviewed 103 papers published over the last 25 years. And we can see a noticeable increase in volume of papers on this topic from 2016 onwards. A total of 18 publications were represented, notably CHI, Interaction Design with Children, DIS and OSCHI, the Australasian HCI conference. The technologies designed or studied were most commonly bespoke prototypes. Smartphones were studied in 18 of the papers, with far fewer papers looking at tablets, computers or PDA-type devices. 28 publications looked at specialised applications. Also included were data visualisation, games, interactive video and digital maps. 29 of the 103 publications didn't report on a specific technology. Looking at the geographic distribution of author affiliations, we see that along with the USA, Australia and the UK have strong representation in this work. We identified four main overarching theoretical perspectives on nature engagement in the literature. Nature as the subject matter of biological science. Nature as something to appreciate and protect. Nature as human habitat and nature culture and human nature entanglements. We now present two typologies which we developed through the scoping review, which allow us to better understand the motivations, underpinnings and trajectory of this body of work. The first is a typology of distance from nature and directness of experience. In this typology, firstly, we identify distance as the extent to which a user is removed from nature. We distinguish here in situ engagement, where the user is in physical or sensory contact with nature, and ex situ engagement, with nature which is remote from the user. And we differentiate here between nearby and distant ex situ engagements. This is because nearby nature, such as one's own backyard, elicits a particular form of interest and allows interesting opportunities and properties as distinct from distant nature. The second dimension of variation is directness of experience which concerns how nature is perceived. Direct engagement involves contact with physical nature and incurs in situ and in real time. For example, Cumbo and colleagues have explored how technology might support children's free roaming play in nature. Indirect contact with nature can take three forms that we identified. Mediated engagement involves viewing or consuming media such as photographs, video or audio recordings. Abstracted nature entails representations such as data visualizations or fact sheets. Simulated nature relates to computer-generated animals, plants and naturalistic settings, such as virtual immersive environments. We identified examples in which these three forms of indirect engagement took place in situ and ex situ. For example, viewing animal media at the zoo, we categorize as an instance of an in situ mediated engagement. Viewing images of wildlife in one's own backyard is an instance of ex situ mediated engagement with nearby nature. And interactive videos for American students to learn about lions' predatory behaviour on the Serengeti is an example of ex situ mediated engagement with distant nature. The same can be said of abstracted and simulated nature. 
They can be experienced in situ or ex situ with nearby or distant nature. Many interventions achieve their value through combining direct and indirect forms of nature engagement. For example, indirect nature interventions can promote, extend or deepen direct experiences of nature. From our review, we also describe a typology of the six roles for technology in nature engagement. 1. Revealing and familiarising. Several interventions propose to help people see features of the natural world that would otherwise be hidden or go unnoticed, such as camera traps to spot backyard wildlife. 2. Pooling knowledge. A variety of interventions have been investigated for citizen science, including apps to collect or analyse photographs and observations of natural phenomena. 3. Nature on demand. Several interventions provide access to nature through video, audio or simulations, primarily motivated by well-being and mood enhancement. 4. Learning about nature. A variety of technologies have been investigated to promote exploration and activity-based learning about nature in the classroom, homes, and when out in nature. 5. Discovering and navigating nature sites. For example, recent work has explored technology to support geocaching, nature play, and exploration of nature by people who are blind or partially sighted. And 6. Experiencing nature from other perspectives. This includes, for example, providing zoo visitors with new perspectives on animals' behaviour or allowing people to interrogate the world of fungi. So these two typologies and the accompanying analysis of deeper themes point to several directions for future research on this topic. For example, there's a need to better understand the risks that indirect nature experiences might replace the sensorily rich, embodied and culturally situated experiences thought to be essential for a sense of connection to nature. Further research is needed to understand the interplays between direct and indirect nature engagement to encourage meaningful interactions and maintain attachment to natural places in an era of high mobility. There's also the opportunity for stronger connections with theories and approaches that account for the interrelatedness of humans and ecosystems, such as the notion of one health and socio-ecological systems. Stronger connections with expertise and theories in other disciplines are needed to develop methods for assessing the impacts of technological nature engagement. And HCI can offer neighbouring disciplines its tradition of grounding design in human and other concerns and of critiquing technology proposed as a simple fix to complex problems. With an expanding range of technologies being deployed by non-technology researchers, HCI is well placed to support global efforts to address the ecological crisis. In summary, the work we surveyed demonstrates the potential for digital technologies to play a role in motivating, fostering, enabling and reflecting upon nature engagement. It shows that technologies can offer diverse forms of direct and indirect nature experiences. We conclude that there's an important and ongoing role for HCI to conceptualise, design and evaluate the role of technologies in human nature engagement.